I'm back, baby! It's time to go to court! I've been waiting so long for this! I've had a lot of work, you know, and I actually do have to work tomorrow. But I really could have not gone any further without actually going as crazy with the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Oh my god! Last time when we played the Great Ace Attorney, the Great Ace Attorney, we decided to, dis to defend Sosaki Natsume. On this time, during this time, I ended up, uh... Oh, <laughs> yeah, Rick, you're actually interacting as a channel. <laughs> During this time, I actually uh, realized that Soseki Natsume, the defendant from this case, is actually based on a real person. Also, at this point, I may have already forgotten some of the voices, but I'm gonna try my best to enjoy to make it enjoyable. I also should have made a bit of hot water in order to make some tea, because as you know, I like making voices. I just enjoy it. <laughs> But to be fair, I'm actually very, very happy because I have been waiting so long to keep doing this. I really enjoyed this game. Hope you enjoyed it with me. Here we go. Now, gameplay. Continue. Oh, we're in court. Here we go. Also, Yadrik, I just realized that you made me lose the game. You know, because of what he typed over here. <laughs> 20 February, 923rd. The Old Bailey, Defendants and the Chamber. Oh, they gave you a lot of power because I gave you power. Well, never expected this. Who'd have thought we'd be back here again so soon? We are on a study tour of Great Britain with intention of learning the country's legal practices. In order to research the latest court procedures, here, we need as much court experience as possible. I'm gonna pull the microphone a bit closer to me, because I'm pretty sure that it might be harder for me to hear, for you to hear me over some of the lower voices characters. In order to research the latest court procedures here, we need as much court experience as possible. Well, yes, I suppose that's true, but... For the person in the dock, it may well be his or her and only time in court. And it could be life-changing. Well, in the previous case they said that pretty much every single killer is killed. Pretty much on the spot. To the point that I'm actually wondering why they just don't bring a freaking uh, gun squad or something. <laughs> in which case, treating this as a research may seem a little... crass. Oh, would you put it like that? You're quite right. Good morning! It's him, right? Yep, it's him. Oh, Mr. Natsume, good morning! <laughs> oh dear, aren't you alright? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. Oh, also, during this time, since I cannot resist, I ended up watching some of the last plays of the game up to the point where I am. So, some of the voices that I make now may be kinda. Uh, what is the term for that? Um. Uh, inspire on those. Yeah, I have been watching Jell Apocalypse again. I have been watching uh, Nyan Cave and some others because, to be honest, this game is so fun. I want to enjoy it a lot. Again and again, even if it's if it's just repeats. I still don't know what happens here. I'm being so excited because we're going to court. Oh dear, are you all right? Your eyes are terribly bloodshot. I already said this though. The early bird catches the worm, as they say here in Britain. Yes, I've heard that expression. But I really don't want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I wasn't so worried I couldn't catch a worm. Oh my god, he's so hilarious. And now I'm absolutely exhausted as a result. Do only retreat people take things so... Is really? God, I love this guy. Thank you for putting... Thank you for putting your fate in us today, Mr. Natsume. I wish I had my life! My whole future hangs in the balance! I am too terrified to tremble! I don't know if you're terrified for that. <laughs> really? I see I feel tremors in the freaking floor. <laughs> I can do this! I can take it! Also, welcome to the Mr. Naruhodo Squire. Ah, 
<laughs> I finally can't say that in a row. Um, yes? I caught a glimpse of the public gallery as I walked by the courtroom. It looked like the opening night of an opera. There were so many people. I had no idea my case was such an notorious affair here in London. Oh, um, neither did I. That's weird. Do you know why that might be, Miss Susato? Oh, that was me! Oh, whoops! Do you know why that might be, Miss Susato? I'm sorry, Mr. Narukado, but I have no idea. So that all knowing look on your face is just coincidence, is it? Okay. And lower the quality on my back plate so that I can don't affect it. Okay, there it is. Don't have a drug for me! It's... it's... It's because of the Reaper, isn't it? <laughs> Lord Ben Six? Is, is that so right, Mr. Sato? I purchased as many different newspapers as I could find this morning. And yes, Lord Ben Six is on the front page of everyone. I knew it! Sometimes after the prosecutor was dubbed the Reaper of the Bailey, he stopped appearing in court, it seems. It's been several years now. In fact, until the day before yesterday. Yes, Inspector Gregson told us something similar, didn't he? Oh boy, this guy. The trial two days ago marked Lord Ben Six's return to the quorum after a very long hiatus. The trial of Mr. Magnus McGilde. Ugh, what a harrowing experience that was. Yeah, I don't even know what to think of that one. I believe that appearance made even greater waves here in the capital than today's. But we wouldn't have realized, of course, having only just arrived in the country. Why is the Reaper... Why is the Reaper back in the Bailey so soon, for what appears to be a mundane murder? That's the question the papers are asking, and they're all speculating various answers. Mundane? Mundane? It's the most significant saga of the century of the summer pass! Oh dear, I meant no offense, Mr. Natsume, but that is how the papers are describing it. Well, at least we also forget the fact that it could spark an international incident. Obviously, the reappearance of this infamous prosecutor has caught people's attention. But there's another plan and similarity with the trial of, with the trial of two days ago. Yes, I agree. Welcome, student Mr. Naruhoto Squire. It's you! Me? Well, I suppose that's true. All times, it is you who stands against the legendary prosecutor. It, it can only mean... And you're friends with the Reaper! <laughs> Please, I don't rub shoulders with, with death bringers! <laughs> I'm afraid that there's only one other explanation. It can only be another... <laughs> Chichu, you scared the heck out of me! <laughs> How you doing today? I'm so happy for playing this game! You know how much I love this series. After all, I was talking about that fact just the other day and thinking about how I still play Phoenix Wright in Ultimate Marvel. <laughs> but let's keep going, I guess, for a moment. <laughs> it can only be another example, Mr. Naruhodo, of your common, uncommon bad luck. I mean, you don't have to put it in the oven in the open. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, this is just my luck! Why must I be represented by a man with such frail fortune? I mean, if you don't want me, I'm the least lucky lawyer alive! <laughs> well, let's, let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. Hmm. Yes, it's true that I'm just a student. New to London with little in the way of experience or skills. Or luck, for that matter. But I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end. And I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, that's nice. Oh, benevolent and luck comes to their Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. I like that pose. You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. 
Oh, benevolent non lucubus <laughs> Oh, benevolent non lucubus assistant Miss Mikotoba Esquires. I'm having your top forever! I shall never forget this great uh, Mr. Natsume, counsel for the detective. Uh, great tennis for as long as I live. Okay. <laughs> Our session is about to begin. Kindly make your way into the courtroom at once. All right then, Mr. Natsume, it's time. Let's go. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> court, 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 court. I may be one of the only people that is so excited to go to court. And again, it's because we're in freaking Ace Attorney. <gasps> this is it. My second appearance in a British court. Pretty sure that that Rinosuke doesn't actually sound that excited as me. And my second trial against the Reaper. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because this time I won't let my faith waver. I believe in my client to the last. It's like you believe in me. I believe I can do this now. I'm ready for this fight. I'm gonna put a quick part of it here. Here it is. <laughs> in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness and their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord! Hmm. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. Sorry, what? Lord Strongheart has told me all about you. That you are a student who arrived in London but two days ago, a mere amateur. D do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you feel compelled to try to help the accused, I believe. Typical Nepalese. <laughs> You're so racist! <laughs> I just don't agree. That should be the opener! <laughs> Freaking chicken! Oh, whoops! Mm, okay. Forgive me, but I do not believe arrogance is an appropri appropriate description. susato san after all, at her previous encounter, the defendant was found to be innocent. Very true. Hmm. That sounds kind of Scandinavian? Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get his accent anyway. And the most fascinating is Dark Trial. It was too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Here's to the quitter and his unfortunate violent end. <laughs> he is prosecuting my defendant, Alexis. What do you think? <laughs> Thank you, counsels. I see both sides are in fine fettle. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you ready to carry out your duties here in court as impartial members of the public? What the f- Wait! Wait, what? 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 Is that Mr. Bruce? Is that... Fair Play? Yes, that's Fair Play! What? Oh my god, I can't believe- I can't remember his voice. <clears throat> you never know when you might be down on your luck, but I believe in you, Ralph. In Fair Play for everyone. Oh my god! <laughs> Well, I must warn you, I'm rather more worthless than I appear. Oh well, not me. What you see is what you get. I'm a peace-loving fella. I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite impossible that must is for... She said juror? Miss Gary Davis, I juror? 
I'm afraid to say, I think it's quite possible that Mustache Foreigner did a thing. Come on, what are we waiting for? No doubt he did it anyway. Eh? Sorry? They didn't quite catch that. Oh my god, they're the pre- God, the jurors are, are always changing and they can be part of the other witnesses. This is so weird. Very well, let us proceed. Your opening statement, if you please, Lord Van Six. Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with a rising power in the Far East. The accused in the dock today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Nusoseki Natsume. Ergil. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, I feel I'd like that better for him. Regrettably, the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most similar act. I love him. Chicho, how was it? Destru <laughs> Destruyo mi pisto para poner un punto. <laughs> of plunging a knife in the back of an innocent woman who was doing nothing but walking down the street. Yes, he does that. A knife crime? I tell you from knives, bitter experience, those are the worst. Bloody oath are they I. Just look at that swallow complexion and short stature. He's one of those dreadful Japanese. Oh my god! <laughs> Yet another racist. Come on, let's get this over with. With me now, everyone. One, two, three! Eh, sorry. Didn't quite catch that. Oh my god, your number six is freaking death. Because putting on El Pisto is not enough. <laughs> you have to smash it against the wall. <laughs> and this is just the opening statement. He's already going nuts. Pray forgive the discourtesy of smashing my hollow chalice here in this great chamber. Oh, talking about that. <laughs> Allow me to call the first witness to the stand. Very well. Well, let the inspector in, please. Oh, it's Tobias Gregson. This is gonna be hard for my throat. Your name and occupation, please. Yes, sir! Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her 20s by the name of Olive Gr <laughs> Of Olive Green. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Inspector? Ought to be? Yes, having been stabbed in the back by a attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now. Yeah, and she's been comatose ever since. What? So they don't even know who she is for sure? Hmm, comatose, I see. Well, her life is not in danger. Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray, elaborate on the details, Inspector. Yes, sir. If I could ask everyone to look at this street map. Oh, here's the gumshoe. As I mentioned, the incident took place three days ago at around 5 in the afternoon. It happened on the pavement running alongside Dry Road, a white road fair for horse-drawn vehicles. It had not long since stopped us. It had not long since stopped snowing as the victim, Miss Green, walking down the street. Out of the blue, she was approached from behind by the accused and stabbed in the back. Luckily, the young lady's life was spared. She's currently being treated in one of the last city's hospitals. But being unconscious as she is, and unable to take a statement from her, of course. This is a case filed with everything we know about the victim so far. Please present it, I want to read it. Thank you, Inspector. The court will accept the documents as evidence as you please. 
File containing a reveal she was found with a knife, blah blah blah, and regained consciousness. What of the weapon that was used? I'm gonna take a moment. Young woman rendered unconscious following a stab wound to the back. Victim, olive green, female, stout. Stout build, yeah, uh, yeah, she is. Early 20s. Pavement of Friar Road, east side. Officer, Rolly Beat. Ah, huh, we still don't have a picture. The victim remains unconscious. Her name was gleaned from her personal effects. Other details are unknown. Apart from the single stab wound from the large knife, no other signs of injury were observed. The assailant was seen running away by the reporting officer and was successfully ex arrested the following day. By the way, I, I actually didn't check this by back time last time. This is a ticket from when he went to buy books at 4.45 p.m. They went to... Your Books. That's the name of the shop. That is Soseki Natsume. He bought with two shillings, shillings, a picture of Monsieur Lecoq, a meal for Goburyo, and Canterbury Journeys. How do you even pronounce this? And this is a map. And this is my armband. <laughs> okay, let's see. What of the weapon that was used? There, I have that here. It was removed from the victim's back. Ouch, that big thing is starting to make me scared to walk the down the street now. With a heavy blade like that, almost anybody would have been able to stab the poor woman. Even the scratch looking soseki san I suppose. Hmm, a common old card in jackknife, I would say. Rather long descript. Thank you, Inspector. The court accepts the blade as evidence. A jackknife. Hmm, it's a chill. How large is this? Now then, what do we know of the motive? Only or valuables, I presume? Let's check this out. Hey, wait, wait a minute. What? Ah. I'm already starting to suspect. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> think about how old this, uh, this era is. I think that they're still in the Meiji period or something. Oh, look here, Mr. Narugsoda. Just at the tip, a small piece of the blade appears to be missing. I wonder... I don't see blood here. It's very weird that they don't keep the blood. <laughs> okay. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. You're right! Well spotted, Mr. Naruhodo. Mi Mr. Misusa. I cannot believe that I made this mistake. I made the... The, sh the horns mistake. Well spotted, Mr. Sato. I wonder what could have happened to it. <laughs> Just... You don't think... It could still be lodged in the victim, do you? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Eliu! I sí, sigo streameando. Estoy divirtiéndome un frigo con esto. Ah, uh, okay, ya dejé el teléfono, ya dejé el teléfono. Pero pues bueno, ¿qué quieres que haga? Llegaron mensajes de emergencia. Ya, ya parece que ya se arregló todo. It could still be lodged in the, in the victim, don't you? Oh, uh, it could still be lodged in the victim, don't you? Oh dear, I do hope not. That sounds terribly painful. What is this? Oh, uh, okay. Anything else? That's... That's all. The only thing that is missing is this. Ouch. Acabas de salir del trabajo, eso está bien pesado. Now then, what do we know of the motive? Only our valuables, I presume? 
From what we can tell by looking at the woman's positions, it seems like she's a poor student herself. Hard to imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment or depicting? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant Mr. Natsume doesn't appear to get up much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Yes! Um... If theft and grievance had been ruled out as the motive, what reason could Mr. Natsume possibly have had for stabbing the young woman? Jet you arrested the man in spite of that? In a totally unjustified and heavy-handed way! Objection! Alright, that's voice. What?! Pray for keep the discourtesy of flinging a freshly uncooked bottle into the public house. Oh my god, he threw it at the people! But your words have soured its hollow pocket. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy handed here. Chicho, that beats the freaking cup into the fire thing. That definitely beats it. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be the John question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the Nipponese student. Constabulary is a word that I'm not used to. Yes, sir! Testimony? Yes! I said it was 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, carrying his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he just bought. As on his way home from a bookshop it seemed. It was just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the block to arrest him. I'm gonna try to be me more methodical in my acting. All books, you say? Yes, my lord. I have a photograph here of the scene of the crime, taken immediately after the incident. Oh my god, she's round. It's called Green Olive. I, I think it makes sense, though. Wait! Pictures already had color? Okay. Ah, Jess, I can clearly see the books to which you are referring. I will take that photographic print as evidence, please, Inspector. Hmm. Your Nipponese are as painless bread, too cowardly to admit defeat. Denying everything is piled overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I... Forgive me, Lord Band 6, but the defendant is not denying everything, as you put it. What are you doing, Mr. Sato? To go on. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhoda? Well, now, you, now that you mention it, when we visit him, visited him in the prison yesterday, he did tell us what had all happened. <clears throat> As I was walking along the car's pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, wearing a green overcoat she was, and, as, and just as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran, as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. Hmm, a green 
overcoat! Well, that's exactly what the woman in the print is wearing. Oh my! A photographic print in full color! What will the quarrel come up with next? I got the rhythm. The defendant has done nothing more than to ad than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean he that he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. Ouch. There was nobody else there at the time. Just the two of them, the victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. A fact that the accused concedes. Uh. Hmm, it seems this cross-examination could prove to be pivotal, counsel. Proceed, please. Yes, my lord. Nothing for it. I have to use this cross-examination to turn the tables here. It's our only chance. <laughs> Finally. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I want to check the final text. I always do that. That's my personal work. What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? If you're unable to sway the jury during this cross-examination, I'm afraid that Mr. Natsume's fate will be sealed. Yes, they're sure to find him guilty. So one way or, an so one way or another, I have to expose an undeniable inconsistency in the inspector's testimony. Okay, as I said, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred, and there was an initially like fuck. A light fuck, you say? Well, 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 light for London. You could see the opposite side of the street for once. Not much farther, though. That's light, is it? Around these parts, yes. Not something an better Japanese fellow like yourself to know, of course. I've read that London is famous for its fog, but in my country people usually imagine that gives the city a rather beautiful appearance. <laughs> oh, quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize, as I speak you can appreciate. I, I see. This time of year, the fog causes a large short number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes, you can even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Indeed. The other day I was very nearly trampled by horses before I could see the carriage they were pulling. Uh, Susato-san and I should definitely remember to stop, look and listen. That nah, last part is actually new. There is. Hey, it's a bit map, but instead of a solo. There is. However, However, on the day that concerns us, the fog was somewhat lighter than usual. I find no doubt lamented by the accused. <gasps> visibility. visibility was reasonably good and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simple, my learned, Quite simply, my learned friend. Because this is what the witness to this crime have told us. Ah, yes, Inspector Grankson mentioned the witness yesterday, didn't he? That's right. One of them is a policeman, I believe, from Scotland Yard. That is correct, ma'am. <laughs> then we must hear their testimony. The prosecution will of course call them to the stand. Should it be necessary? But wait a minute! At 5 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already! No matter how light the fog may have been, no one could have seen. I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated in the night by gas streetlights. The prosecution believes that there would have been ample light by which the witness, by which to witness the crime. Why? Here in London, for the first time in history, mankind has completely conquered the darkness. Which means we really need to hear those witness statements. 
If I could just get through the fog of this cross examination, maybe we'll be able to. <laughs> it seems the counsel for the defense is taking stock. Continue with your testimony, Inspector. I need to... I can't find the points for him. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. Hold it! I was not supposed to voice that once. From behind, you say? That's right. As you can see from this print. Yes, quite so, Inspector. The handle of the weapon is clearly protruding, pro protruding from the victim. Back. And you see this poor woman, Miss Green, remains in a critical condition. Comatose, no less. Comatose, no less. Yes, something like that. I'm afraid so, my lord. Yes, she's been treated at parts. <clears throat> I was hopeful that she'd come around before the trial started, so I could take a statement. But it wasn't to be. Yes, that is indeed a pity. It would have been most illuminated to hear the victim's own account of events. Luck is on your client's side, it's, it's client's side, it seems. Huh? <laughs> on the contrary, my client has been exceedingly unlucky! Your force of tongue is seriously undermined by those disturbing white eyes, I'm afraid. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Hold it! Mr. Natsume belongings? Um, I think you'll find it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, the three books on the floor. That's right, my lord. Second-hand books they were. Irrepar irreparably damaged after falling in the snow, of course. Can I have them? The accused could easily have carried all three books in one hand. Which means... His other hand would have been free to wield a knife, for example. He's very clever, isn't he? What do you mean? He's made it extremely hard for you to assert that Mr. Natsume had his hands full with his books. He's managed to close the one venue of escape we might have had before we even knew it was there. You mean to say that the defendant was holding his belongings as he thrust his knife into the woman's back? That must be what happened, my lord. Yes. <clears throat> Those being a number of old books he'd just bought, he was on his way home from the bookshop. Hold it! The defendant apparently visits a second handbook second hand bookshop on a daily basis. Yes, so I understand. A shop full of English literature. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. The bloke's room was stuck floor to ceiling when those musty old, musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, police inspector? Well, if I must, I'll have to ask you to look at the street map again, I'm afraid. That is not the shop. That is not the shop. The closest second-hand bookshop to the accused lodginess is placed here, Urban Books. They don't place on the corner of Briar Road and Miss Mears Chon Street. That is the first contradiction here. As it happens, the accused is currently living in lodgings on the other side of Briar Road on the opposite end. Oh wait! Which means it would, would it there it is! That is the voice that I was using for him! Finally remember Gregson! <clears throat> Which means it doesn't take a genius to work out the route he would have taken home. I just remember that this actually is making my throat vibrate as if it was some kind of electricity or something. But that was the the voice that I was looking for. It took me so long to remember, but here it is. Something like this. Finally remember Gregson's voice! I can't believe it! It took me a while, but here I am. I can finally make him sound so different to everybody else. Yes, I concur with your conclusion, Inspector. The defendant would certainly have passed the scene of the crime on his way home from the particular shop. Mr. Naruhodo, I think that what the Inspector just told us 
it turned out to be a, of vital importance. Yes, I agree. The most important point that the inspector just made being the bookshop's name. Inspector Gresson, may I ask you a favor? What? Yeah, it feels so natural now. Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your te formal testimony, please? I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe. Oh, well, you know, I mean, yes! <laughs> it could be a very important clue. Very well. Not that I can see it being of any great significance. But please rewrite your testimony accordingly, Inspector. Yes, sir, my lord. Whatever you say. Could the man be any more sardonic? What is sardonic? I need to look for that quite word. He was on his way home from Burber Books. A second, a second her bookshop he apparently patronizes. Hold it! Whoa, I actually made put my hand over here just out of instinct. Hmm, so the book so the shop is called Bourbon Books, is it? That's right. That's the closest second hand book. Second hand bookshop to the Q's lodgings. And to get from there back to his room. He would have gone right past the very spot where the incident took place. If if I could just confirm one point, can we be sure that the defendant really did visit Bourbon Books on the day in question? Well, we haven't actually confirmed it, no. You haven't confirmed it? Why did they build not, Inspector? Well, um, the thing is, the shopkeeper's gone on a trip, you see, and the morning after the incident to call it more stock, I'm told. So we, um, haven't been able to ask the block if the accused, if the, the block, if the accused visited his job on the day in question or not. Well, in that case, what did the defendant himself have to say about it? No recollection. What? What? According to the statement he made at the time, the accused has no recollection of where he'd been. Of course he doesn't. The bloke clearly has his head in the clouds whenever he's walking about town. He claims he just wanders into whatever shop he happens, happens to be passing and rarely notices the name. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Whoa, going from his voice to the judge is difficult. Hmm, I should say the man ought to learn to look where he's going, at the very least. Hmm. So, oh. it's just as I thought to. Yep. Is something the matter? Inspector, you may continue with your testimony. Inspector. There it is. It's a matter of working out who the books belong to and we found the block to arrest Hold it. Him. Here we go! You asked for the help of the famous detective Herlock Sholmes to locate the defendant, I believe. Stuff and nonsense! Sorry? That jack in office, that busybody, just comes and sticks his in whatever we ask him or not! But, but according to what I have here... Mr. Sean was shown to the scene by Scotland Yard detectives. Well, that was nothing to do with me. <clears throat> the dads at the scene must have done it without my permission. Uh, I tell men time and again, whenever something happens, send word to headquarters. <laughs> then follow your bloom instructions. He's angry. I see. Oh, whoa. If that meddler gets his hands on any details, we'll all be reading it in the Rants magazine next month! And you call bet you can bet your last farthing that I'll be in there too. Strip of all of my hard work in the case. Yes, Mr. Sholmes! No, Mr. Sholmes! Aren't you clever, Mr. Sholmes? That's all the things I'll be getting! Inspector, if the man is providing detrimental to the jar's activities. Perhaps I should step in and go with him? Oh my god! Ah! It appears Inspector Gregson is lost for worse. Yes. Yes, the Reaper's words carry a lot of weight of his name. Anyway, the point is this, that little Japanese blocks already admitted it. He 
Please admit that those books all over the pavement. Let's see, we're the ones he bought that day. Hmm. Okay, this is the same one. I already had the answer. Here it is. Bourbon books. Your books. Um, if, if I could just stop you there, Inspector Gregson. What is it, Sun Cheng? I'm a busy man, you know. This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsuma's room. It was issued on the day of the incident and details the purchase of three second-hand books. And you found that in the Kyo's rooms, did you? Yes, but the point is not where this receipt was found, but the name of the shop printed on it. Go on. This receipt was issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Your Books? Why O R E I person? <laughs> I think he also found it funny. <laughs> yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books at the second half bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not Bourbon Books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Yes, sir. Your books is in another. It's another second-hand bookshop not far from Bourbon Books. It's just that... Well, it's such a small place, I didn't think the kids would have known about it. Objection! But in fact, that is the bookshop which the defendant visited on the day in question. And this receipt proves it! Objection! Yes, for what difference it makes. Whatever, whatever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. Objection. I disagree! I mean, after all, um... I have the street map here, that might be of help. Oh, um, yes, thank you! Have a look at this, please. If the defendant had been returning from Bourbon Books... Then yes, he would almost certainly have passed the place where Miss Green was attacked. However, if we take into account the fact that he was actually at another bookshop, your books... It may very well turn out that he wouldn't have passed that location at all! Hmm, could that be true? My, my! It rather depends on where this other bookshop is, but I do declare it may be a possibility. Isn't... is that right, Mr. Lawyer, sir? What you just said? Absolutely! It absolutely could be right! Inspector Gregson, where is this Jorbox establishment? It's gonna be next door, isn't it? Well, um, obviously we look into that. It turns out that Jorbox is just here on this next corner of Mirschamp Street going east. Okay, he could still have taken the same route, but he could also go on through Calabash Road. And there you have it! As you can clearly see now... Uh, oh <laughs> Yeah Destroy it! Do anything! But destroy it, please! I learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown <laughs> I do know this phrase! I do know this phrase! My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown. The way he regales us with such witticism. Did your future career in the circus? Eh? You put that glass down now, or I'll put it down for you! I um, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. If the accused was coming home from your books instead of... <laughs> instead of bourbon books... There's no doubt he still would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. Yes, thank you, Inspector. Uh, allow me to re reiterate for the for my learn, if somewhat slow, Nipponese friend. <laughs> Wherever the man purchased his musty tones, it makes no difference in the final analysis. <laughs> Oh, 
as I suspected, you can't fool me, and I don't suggest you try! What did I say, eh? I've had enough of this now! Big your burden, terribly sorry, but would you mind repeating that? Mr. Nerhuddle! We mustn't give up! What, what do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide that Mr. Natsumi is guilty. And she's absolutely right! We must think! We must consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. It claims saki -san must have paced the location of the incident on his way home from your books, but... Can I raise it? Ouch! The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed! Explain yourself, Counsel. Um, uh, yes, my lord! You, you can see what I mean in this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings... Mr. Natsumi could have followed this route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to have to take between the two places. Yeah, actually, yeah, it makes sense. If the defendants use these streets, look what happens! He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was, was attacked. Objection! Talking back to a clown is a full surrender. However, I feel compelled to point out that that route is what is commonly referred to as the long way round. Uh, uh. On a cold winter night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, um, uh, the answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words, the accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings, and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. Objection! <laughs> I like his little objection. But, but, oh, yes, I got it. <laughs> objection! <laughs> Obviously, we must ask the man himself, ask Mr. Natsume, which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Uh, that's right. I said the bloke seems to spend his time outside wonderingly, aimlessly. Wonderly. <laughs> Wondering aimlessly from A to B. And there was no exception. Since he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home, I need to do something. Sorry guys, I kinda forgot that while I love Gregson's voice, it really destroys my throat. So I'm gonna have to make myself one of those teas that I love so much for this. A lot of thank yous to Star-Lord, gave me one of the teas that are actually good for the throat. Put me the broccoli or something. I really love making all of these voices, but come on. Oh, did I accidentally go forward? There was no exception. <laughs> he says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I don't... I don't believe this! Hmm. 
I thank you, my learned friend. And suggest that we do not waste any more of the course time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you, insightful jurors? Ah, uh, here we go again. Oh boy, oh boy! Bah, 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 bah. Oh, I killed my brother. Whoa! It just happened. Hold it! I agree with Norman Six! Wholeheartedly in every way! What? I don't believe it! Does this mean... Okay. No! We members of the jury are completely convinced now! Am I getting notifications? <laughs> oh well, whatever! Very well, in that case, I, hear I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty! Whoa! Guilty! 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 That's your voice? Guilty! This is a scary as heck. What appeared the jury's leaning is unanimous. To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve, your queen and country admirably. Teacher, do you have something to say about this? <laughs> Mr. Narujo, though? No! Not yet! This isn't over yet! I still have one less chance to sway the opinion of the jury! <laughs> I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way! I have to turn this around! Somehow! Mm. Those are the eyes of Quarry, not yet willing to give up and die! <sighs> So I presume you intend, you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense, written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will, but it's a defense prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready! Okay, first, Bruce, fair play. I'm all too familiar with that Nippon is whippersnapper and his uncle's refusal to throw it on his alley. Very well then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will explain on. You will each explain on what grounds you have deter determined the defendant to be guilty. Oh god, I love the cross-examination. The, 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 the summation examination uh, music. For pity's sake, that little Nipponese oddity already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why it can only have been the victim? The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back home from the bookshop, not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How oh, dreadful! I really don't care, can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing! Hmm, your books, yes, nice job, Dad, but work on books? Hmm, no, not worth a piece of This is so odd! With only minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. 
Furthermore, we have heard from the instruct inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Hmm, why do you have to run away like that? How are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for defense? Mr. Naruhodo, this is no time for grumbling! If you want to force the trial to continue... Yes, I know, I know. I have to turn the tide. Must make the jurors change their minds. Well, four of them at least. Exactly! We have no choice but to force forward. You have the floor, counsel. In your summation examination. Yes, my lord! I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryunosuke. You can do it. Yes, I can say Ryunosuke. <laughs> For pity's sake, that little Nippon is already already admitted himself, didn't he? Um, excuse me, but... Aren't you? Yes, that's right, I was a witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the side of it, anyway. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After, that's, that's right. After the coal rush down under, I came back to London to work. The coal rush down under? And it was all going streamingly until you started fussing around. Plus, fair play was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I forgot that! How you treated me the other day! <clears throat> you had me and that John Hunter pent as criminals! Oh well, you know, what an the bitch! <laughs> now there's all sorts of rumors pushing around, and the police have been badgering me non-stop! If, if I could turn back the clock... Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hunter. At least I'm in the clear now. I'm free to make up my mind about who's guilty and who isn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given her awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. Isn't the guy on the third one? If we say that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why? It can only have been the victim. Hold it! You read at the time of the incident. The defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat looking ahead of him. Well, why, that's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was a victim. And clearly that funny little Nipponese man with its disturbing mess that is a culprit! Take care, Alexis. Enjoy your nap. I know that you woke this morning, and you do deserve this. But let us not forget, madame, the defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, is his life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward. Honestly, claiming the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that's a lie as you're suggesting, do you think he would have concocted something more credible? Oh, really couldn't say, after all. You are... boring. Just to say what goes through your funny little minds. <gasps> you... <laughs> I don't want to say it in chat in stream, but you an ass! Certain woman! I could tell you what's going through my little funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. Oh, I do declare the man has already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could have possibly have committed this awful, awful crime! Uh. If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man, really. It couldn't be more simple. Oh, the, the water is ready. <laughs> I need my throat.
If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you're too kind, my lord. That went well. Or air. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back home from the bookshop. Not in winter. Hold it! But you can deny that there are other books Mr. Natsume could have taken back from your books. Oh yes, like you drew on the map, you mean? What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at that moment, there's no proof that shows he did it. Is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand that, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoying, literally. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. <laughs> Was it all this true? So, really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went his he went home along Briar Road. I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given it a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did. That, I mean, if there was some logical reason for why he might have gone the Calabash Road way, it'd be different. Hmm. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Hmm. A reason why Suzuki-san might have taken the longer way home? Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to say this young man's opinion without one. So, that poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful! <laughs> Whatever is the matter, young man? You're the wife of, of Mr. Gary Depp, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume his room. And the master's wife? Where did you get your idea, sir? And the maid? The maid, you understand? Uh, uh, I cannot be the wife! She's keeping up that charade. <laughs> this is gonna be awkward. <clears throat> um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see? It wasn't the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsu um, the defendant, takes lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes! He's just the sort. What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sorting down a scrupulous mustache. The man never speaks. And don't get me started on the shifty eyes. All the neighborhoods are taken about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh dear. You're Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm. Nothing more. Well, you just call him a worm, so... Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting his dismay to speak. You said enough damn near things already. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, and so is my family's! Huh? The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a library like me can afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. I need to do the wife and kids. Oh, I see, that must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. 
On this time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left and right and center. Oh, is this gonna be interesting? And after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog for from dawn till dusk it is. So, you were digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, weren't you? That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, something happened. It was just round the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence. That's right. Mersham Street, was it? Mersham Street. On the map, Mr. Narjolo, there are only three named streets. You're number five. I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can't we just get this burning over with now? I didn't expect that this was going to happen. Please, sir, it's important. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it then. On the day it happened, I was digging up Miss Chomp. Bit from dawn till dusk. Hold it! So, if I understand correctly, you're a day laborer and you were doing road maintenance that day? That's right. Like I said, you get a lot of burst gas and burnt water pipes underground in the middle of winter. It's the only time of year fellows like me can actually make a few bob. And I'm missing out today! Oh, poor man. And when you say from dawn till dusk... Well, the work has to be completed within the day, you see. No coaches or pedestrian can pass while it's happening. Oh, <laughs> there it is! I wonder if I could trouble you, sir. Mark on the street map the exact location of the works you were carrying out. Keep it here, then. Let me have a look. Right, let's see, then. Here we are. Where's Chum Street? Yes, it was just here, like. Howdy dig, I can tell ya. We had to get through all the drifts of snow that had frozen solid. And at what sort of time did you finish the work? Well, we started in the morning and we can have finished before six, I'd say. The snow had stopped coming down, but it was long past dark for sure. That means the road work was still going on when Miss Green was attacked at around five o'clock. Road works on Merstrom Street, huh? Very, very important. Hmm, pure books, yes, nice job, that. But purple books? Hmm, no, not worth a visit. Hold it! Hmm? Sorry? Paul, did you say? Paul, what? Um, no, 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 no. What I was, what is it was called? I actually had never had a uh, witness or anybody misunderstood the whole thing. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. And at what time did you visit the your, your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before 5 that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before 5, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What? What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and dunked my head. It's always worse after the snow stops falling. That's when it's most slippery. I knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Oh, poor man. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right, I live in Corpipe, you see. Getting down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. You're number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Hmm? Sorry? Extremely sick? No, 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 I'm quite all right now. <laughs> In 
It sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can feel feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree, it's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually intimidate Mr. Natsume or anything of anything. That's something. We must use that to our advantage, Mr. Naruhodo. Naruhodo? Cunningly! Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again carefully. If any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercilessly against one another. Yes! Don't hold back! Pit them all against each other! Okay, I wonder if they updated his dialogue. Ah, there is. I sleep over that even in my cell phone Calabash Road. I knocked myself clean out, you know. I can't believe that I wasn't brought back here. That was around 5 o'clock, you say? The same, time, the same time as the victim was attacked. I don't know anything about the girl who was trapped. Put my dinners on the table at the same time every day. And for the record, could you please identify the precise location of your fault? Goodness, it was aeons ago. I'm not sure I can remember. It was three days ago. Try dredging your memory, please. Hmm. Well, let me see. It was especially slippery around about. Ah, oh, yes, I remember now. It was just on the corner here. What? Oh my god! What happened to you then? Were you alright? Well, you don't get too many people down Calabash Road, you see. He's round and dressed in green. Are you kidding me? That's what happened? Mr. Natsume does not remember much about it because of the trauma. He just remember a little scream. Green Olive was stabbed. Mr. Natsume went down Calabash Road. He saw somebody fall down in front of him and get hurt and make a shout while he was on a corner, on his way home. Then he ran away fast. When he did, normally he wouldn't go into the first building that is there. Meanwhile, on the other side of the road, you have Green Ol Miss Olive Green, who was stabbed by somebody or these things didn't happen in the same place. I can get what is going on here. Well, you don't get too many people down Calabash Road, you see. But there was no one around when I fell. No one around when I knocked myself out. No one around when I came to again. No one around when I sneezed. So I picked myself up and went back to my nice warm house where my growing children were waiting for me. I said a lonely picture, you paint, sir. You were fortunate to not have frozen to death. Yes, how lucky that he wasn't more seriously injured. True, it sounds like it was very nearly another hospital or mission or worse. Ah, just one more thing. Were you wearing that same green overcoat on the day in question? He also detected it. Absolutely, it's the only coat I have. It took until this morning to dry out properly. Good job too, or I'd have nothing. Or I'd have had nothing to wear here. Look on your blessings, I say. <laughs> oh boy, he said that. Hmm, I suppose we should. This gentleman certainly had a close shave there. Okay, this is the same dialogue. I cannot believe that I made it cool. I know who to pit against another. Okay, hit. These two. Objection.
Objection! Those two statements are clearly let out with one another. <laughs> Those two statements are clearly let out with one another. At odds, Council, explain yourself. Please don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Uh, what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, Jerry number three. Oh, me, sir? What do you, what, what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implication of what's, of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsuma visited this bookshop to purchase to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out at Merce, on Merchant Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant Ruth Holm could not have taken him along Merchant Street and down Briar Road. Oh yes, of course. What what do you think, sir? Well yes, you can argue that. Well yes, you can argue that really, can't you? We must have cut uh, two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go on their way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I, I suppose that must be right, huh? Juror number three, just at the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, we see now that he had no choice. Yes! My lord, Mr. Just, sir, if I may. Yes? I, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. <laughs> yes, I'd like to see the trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. What about you, sir? Uh, who, me? Well, alright then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in, that's what I say. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruhodo! That was wonderful! Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least, to strengthen our position somewhat. Yes, and it will prompt the other members of the jury to consider the instance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are right, really right or not. Now, if only... We could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Kume. We might be able to fit the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. And Six is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent, by whatever means we have at our disposal. Well, he can speak. Thank you, Council. On with the summation examination, please. Yes, my lord! I have to say not guilty at this point, so I can see where this trial goes from here. Whether it's digging up roads or digging up the truth, you've got nothing. You've got to see it through to the end, haven't you? Okay, let's see what I can say. There it is. Objection! Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the jury's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two, juror number six. Why? Whatever do you mean, sir? Hmm. I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable, it's not like I was loud or anything. There is at least one fact of which we can be sure of here. The bookshop receipt found in the defender's rooms clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased and purchased a number of second-hand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat suddenly collapsed in the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are well aware of all this. The poor young woman was stabbed, obviously. Objection! Can we really be sure of that, madam? My! Whatever do you mean? 
I'm sure you heard Jero number 6 account of what happened to him that day. The same afternoon, there was somebody else who, apart from the victim, who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets on the neighborhood. Oh my! My goodness, you... you mean... That's right! I'm referring, of course... To a hard of hearing juror number six! Are you, are you really suggesting... That the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant circles in the front of his eyes... Was a jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes! After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that! My god, that's me! Mm hmm? Sorry? You need a. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you need a B. And crucially, we know precisely. We know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell! Oh, Calabash Bro! Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number 6, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back home to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home! Oh my! You idiot old man, if you hadn't been so dumb as to be roaming about there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago! And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? It is it a crime for the... Is it a crime for the elite to walk the streets these days? Is it a crime to sleep over on the ice? <laughs> is it a crime? To keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning, I presume. I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too! What? Is it a crime to change your mind? Is it? Well... Ah... Oh, what a nice old fella. Well, that summation examination has concluded with a large shift in opinion. The eyes, too. The nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. That is a very, very weird way of saying it, Judge. This trial will continue. Objection! Oh, he's angry again. Break it. Could it seem, could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hollow chalice moments after raising an objection, only to crush it in disgust? Pray or give the discourse. Lord Van Six? It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing being them as insightful. Yet, I just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Objection! I haven't tricked anyone! Everything I've said is the truth! Indeed, no one juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road as he. 
I believe you said it was a good two jars of the pigment, which had been excavated, sir. That's right, it took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me, do you have any notion of the distance that two jars represents? Wait a minute, that's very small. Uh, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two jars is... a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily bolted by anyone of moderate figure. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh, uh, me? Ah, oh, well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? You perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the side of your works. I wouldn't dream of it, what a waste of time! No coaches would have a hope of passing anyway. We just and we just turn any gentlefolk back. Hey, come. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two jars trench in his meanderings around town. <gasps> is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the Count were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down the briar road. Uh, crushed in a single sentence. An old man. Old man? You can talk! You say that at around 5 o'clock on the day in question, a slip and fell on Calabash Road. Ray, was there a suspicion looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I am. Uh, uh, can't say I remember. You don't remember? How about a Quaker, my learned friend? You say that it was this old man that the accused saw that would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. <laughs> order, order! Lord Van Six, explain yourself. My lord, if you had such a trenchant argument of your sleep, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Because he can speak! Hmm. I wanted to give this John Foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. <laughs> but my hospitality has its limit, and they have been reached, I feel. Hi, Cape! So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witness. Granted, fairly bring forth the witnesses. It's... it's Ned's witnesses? Mr. Naruhodo, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland's Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that this is likely that to be the prosecution's witness. Alright. No matter who Van Six brings to the stand as his witness, and no matter what they say, I believe in Sasekisen! I know he's innocent. And I'll keep living to the very end, until this battle is over. Is that to be continued? Oh no, it's not. Okay, I, I wanna keep going. <laughs> Witness, please state your names and occupations for the court. I don't even know where to begin with this too. I'm gonna take a moment to check. 
everything up. Okay, I already checked. Oh, wait, wait. With the magnifying glass. No, it doesn't. I was thinking that the name of the books might be different or something. Oh, right. <laughs> we don't even know that. What? Constable Rolly Pizza! Nothing to report on the streets, sir! Oh my... What is this music? Also, I really like the tone of voice that I instantly gave it to me. Uh, my name is Speed. Patricia is my name. I'm proud to say I'm this junk town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, 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 it was your husband I was asking about. It seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, a truly in the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I should have heard that before, actually. Yeah, you heard that from, from Gregson. Indeed, apart from rare days off, our gallant officers stretch some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check that meters are reading through, oh my god, and they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lightning and extinguishing our street lights. Oh my god! There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet, I'd have collapsed long ago. But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. <laughs> on the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction, and they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mistress Pete? That's right, sir. Isn't it, really? <laughs> Constable Rolly's Pete, sir! Nothing to on the streets, sir! What a great witness is going to be! I can't believe what I'm saying. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir! It was her wedding anniversary, and Rolly was taking me for her out for a meal. There was no tea, time to change after work. Anyway, the silhouettes appear out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the other one scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course. And then we wait for help at the nearby police box. But it was definitely the Japanese man in the dock. Rolly and both saw him as clear as day. Rolly didn't say anything. Well, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have posi pos positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true, the alternative course of events that you establish in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death kneel, in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate Ben Chansey, and on your wedding anniversary, too. Oh, I know. But I still managed to go out for the evening with my aunt. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed. However, <clears throat> this 
cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? I learned, friend. The witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying on their oath that it was without doubt the accused Mr. Soseki Natsume. And one of these side witness is a policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. It's said that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Enough preamble. Counsel for the defense. Commence the cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. Hmm. It was a way. Let's go all the way to the end as usual. So that's it, is it? That's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Nahuha? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Mistress Breed, Mr. and Mistress Beat, saw what they saw that they oh, Rolly Beat, totally Beat, he's he's so tired. That's the joke they're making with this one. Rolly Beat, Patricia Beat, Patricia. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene of the prior road that day. Mm. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no, then what do we do? If Kazuma-sama were here... What are you trying to say? I think you will try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean somewhere else? Your statement about seeing Mr. Natsume is unequivocal, calling that into question won't help. But if you could not identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them and make the jury doubt if the very memory of the day is accurate. Oh, right. But simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in this statement somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an errantly and unfavorable conclusion. Why do I always seem to be up against it? Okay. Hold it! Not time to change after work, you say? Are you also a member of the police, Mr. S Mistress Beat? No, sadly not. It is a job for strapping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Rolly looks ever so handsome in this uniform. It suits you down the ground, doesn't it, darling? <laughs> and what? Oh, I just finished my beat. Why don't I were heading back to the station? I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is, is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh, no, really. I much prefer you in the uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes! Oh dear, this doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beat for the day, correct? Yep, that's what she said. That's right, sir. Yes, although I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But policing my life, sir! As long as I'm proud of honor of this, I'll turn my city and make win to the end. What's that now? I were in court, sir. Prove that I'm a London copper, sir. I has the noble found in principle of the fourth grade in it, as I remember to all those policemen on our own duty. The petrol districts of London turn up and uphold the peace of the common man. So, and for such a noble cause, I covered 20 minutes every single day with a fail and with a crumble. Because I know that the plotting of my pussy soul, Londoners need to hear to feel safe and secure. Wow! So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But, so! You saw the other day I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary, so! Mr. Speed puts up a lot being married to a puppy like me! 
I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care! <laughs> I like that! Oh, but! Oh, really? I don't even know how to react to this! Oh, what a charming couple! Their young love is such a joy to behold! If a little over the top, perhaps? Under, kindly describe what happened next. Anyway, the silhouettes are barely oh, off. The silhouettes? That's right, they were coming towards us, walking a prior run in the opposite direction. There was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny thin looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in the sprint, unlike Mr. Natsume. Yes, apparently it does. And you're certain that at the time, there was nobody else nearby. Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there are street lights in Briar Road, you see. There was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Hey, wake up! fog on the ground. But Bright Road is that straight you could see a fairly long way down the pavement. And there's this street light in a well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. Before sleep takes a firm hold, your answer, please, Mr. Bay, beat. Are you quite sure of what you've said? Yes, sir! As a copper who spends all day every, every day keeping watch on the street, I swear to it, sir! Oh my god! I'm not sure, as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat! Oh, really? Oh my god! Hmm, they're still in there and there was no one else around there other than the victim. I don't care. It's starting to seem like they must. that must be how it really happened. It's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, I didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did I? For the scene all too convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? All of a sudden, I went of them just collapsed on the floor and they were scattered something before we know. Hmm. Scattered something? What do you mean by that? Oh well, I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then we got closer and we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Please wake up! Hmm? What? Oh yes, that's right. It was old books. I see. Old books. Yes, sir! The culprits have dropped a number of them. All around the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed. It's clearly a picture in this photographic print. It's important to know that it's in color. That rotten Japanese man did one. Did that way he did the deed. Hold it. Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. It was the man in the dog without question, sir. So. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat like eyes, the tall mouth, the snuff nose. Everything! Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right! You looked at a poor defenseless woman with those terrifying intense eyes! And then suddenly threw his books into the pavement and ran away! I see! This is tough! Let's even as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind you that the court... The, the, may, may I remind the court... That this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now please continue. Yes, sir. We ran straight away, of course, and they went for the for a police box. 
Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no. I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I'm the proud wife of one after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Oh, well, uh, yes, that's nice. He has Mr. P to go. I was off duty by that point. But a Bob is never truly off duty, of course. I feel a place to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Reserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. This way, a simple Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police spot. <sighs> I'm so tired again. Um, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on the crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was there wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the beat and the incident fell under, so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could, and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There is nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Citizens. Oh, please, you're making me blush, isn't he, darling? Oh, come on, just answer the man. Yes, sir! What position is that? You didn't even know what she said. Let's move on, shall we? That one. But surely you would have been able to see his face by the light of the gas street lamps, wouldn't you? We absolutely could! Us Londoners have exceptional eyes and I hope you know! Right? The light from the street lamp was more than enough! And my husband already told you that the fog was only light, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Well, what of the fog? We're famous for it across the club, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is! It is! When it's thick, you can even see the hand at the end of your own arm! Yes, alright, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? Stop shaking the baby! Because the fox makes your eyes very sharp, you see. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain that it was that little Japanese man we saw. She seems so happy about this, so I'm gonna voice it like her. Can't we, darling? Come on, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> uh, 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 yes, it was a no mistake. The mustache, the husband, <laughs> and this nub nose. Unmistakable, so. As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was a second send they saw running away from the scene of the crime. Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh. Oh, yes, of course, what is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony! Is that right? Is it? Well, I'll do it! <laughs> oh my god! It's... What? No, 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 oh, no, it's not really that at all. It has been a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail, everything, like, like, oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? I could tell you the names of every single one I could. Every single one. Got it. This is what I wanted. Oops. That didn't look... And you dare to question how reliable my testimony is! That will do, Mr. Pete. No, it won't do it all! That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of! Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that really will! I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fist down. I mean, she is shaking him very hard. 
You are a man who also gets tired easily. I wonder, how would that feel for you? P perhaps you would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Mr. Pitt. Like in your own grave. I don't abuse you. Oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. What in it, darling? What in it? I don't even remember what happened. I can't even tell you the names of the four books he drew. Wait, 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 wait. I want to hear her first, but I want to point out the contradiction so badly. Yes, we know that there were books dropped at the scene of the crime, as you say. Those purchased by the accused of the nearby second-hand bookshop on the big question. After I'd been to the police box for help, I... Well, I decided to have a good look over the area for a good picture. I'm a proud policeman's wife, after all. I did it for Rally. I hate her so much. And what was your husband doing at the time? Oh, he was lying face down in the snow. <laughs> it's so well deserved. Oh my god! What's wrong with this cup? Uh, how this couple works? He works ever so hard, you know. Ever so hard. Don't you, my darling? <laughs> oh my god. Interesting way of going to the scene of the crime. Well, Mr. B Mr. Speed, seeing as you've relegated, they regale the core with tales of your powers of recollection. Would you be so kind as to recount the titles of the books you observe at the scene? I'd be happy to. Now, are you all listening? There was a picture of Monster Somebody or Other. And what's his journey? I hate her so much. The picture of Monster and the Cook. Something journey, there is. She's missing a meal. And there was um, a meal for someone. And the last one was definitely the thing gummy something. Thank you. Oh my god! She's a freaking mess. I. You see? Oh my god! Yes, I see there are one or two holes in your memory. Oh well, they were along those lines, I'm quite sure. Yeah, they're missing one. There were indeed books found, the same with titles along those lines, as you put it. Well, what did I tell you? So I think it's very mean the way you've been playing that my testimony can be trusted. Don't you agree, darling? Oh, come on! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what the freak? Anyone, anyone who says my Patricia will have to answer, well, me to answer too. He has a freaking gun! Why does this freaking narcoleptic have a gun? Terrifying. <laughs> yes, she really is. He has a freaking gun. <laughs> okay, I know what's the contradiction. I know, I know. They actually mentioned. Oh boy, I forgot that this was very long to So, you're saying that there were four books? That's right. Remember all of them. A picture of me and somebody, what's it journeys, a meal for someone, and the thing I miss something. That is the one that I don't know. I'm sorry, Mr. Speed. But there's a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no! What, what flaw? Simply that at the scene of the crime, there were only three books, not four! What? This is a receipt from the bookshop where the defendant bought his books. It's your books? Yes, it's Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. Only three? No, no, no! That can't be! I remember seeing them! 
There were four books I told you. Four TTO books! Oh, really? How about a good look at this photographic print of the scene of the crime? As you can clearly see from this evidence as well, there were only three books. But I just don't believe it! Wait. I saw them! There! I swear! I saw them! I saw them! And I'm gonna be doing it. No, madam, I'm afraid your powers of observation cannot be relied upon. <laughs> so it cannot be denied. That thought you saw it was the defendant you saw. You could very well be mistaken. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! <sighs> Objection! Ah! I love doing that. It's plainly epithet that it is your powers of deductions that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipponese friend. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene, but that you know very well you have no hope of disproving. But So you've striven to avert attention from that by tint of some inconsequential discrepancy. Would that be fair? Ah, uh, he sees right from me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain. With a toast. Because I have to be so extra, or I won't get paid. <laughs> To the policewoman's wife, and hear entirely accurate testimony in every respect. Oh? Huh? You see, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene on Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. Objection! But what about the photographic print? It only shows three books. Quite right. Only three can be seen in that print. That print? You mean to say... <laughs> Allow me to present another. One that shows the victims. I really love how my memory works. This book is burned and it's the lion's pride. This is Gar Mr. Gary Depp's book. I don't believe it! It's the for book! As you will observe. The fourth book was hidden from view in the original print by the big team's uh, no! No! Okay. I just remember. The fight between the Gary Debs happened at the exact same time that the Sabin occurred. I couldn't see outside, but the book got burned in the altercation. Why does she have this particular book? It's even burned. It's the same one. Order, order! There, you see, you see, look at that! Look, look, look! Yes. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Yes, sir, but there's always right, sir. Let us stop the receipt by the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Mr. Spit, the titles once again, if you please. Oh, yes, of course. The picture of Mr. Somebody or other. The picture of Monsieur Lecoq. Lecoq. What? 
Jennings? Canterbury Jennings. Canterbury Jennings. A meal for someone. A meal for Gabriel, in fact. As the court has just heard, the witness remembers the book titles of flawlessly, save for a few minors. Mr. Speed's powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. <laughs> Did you hear that, Raleigh? The gentleman paid me a compliment. The sup! Flawless sup! Patricia's flawless sup! There are only three books on the receipt, and Mr. Speed mentioned four. There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly the fourth book is that which shown in this big photographic print. Sorry, Council, but does not but does not that not seem odd? Why should the fourth book be omitted from the receipt? It's not odd at all, my lord. As the photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, it belongs to the victim. The victim was holding her own book? I wonder, what became of that fourth book? Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigations officer at Scotland Yard. I have it here as evidence. Finally, I want to see it! I want to see it! I want to see it! You will submit the and the aforementioned photographic print of the court, please, Pato. My pleasure, my lord. Okay. The prosecution rests. There is burn. Let me see. It's a book entitled The Lion's Pride. I'm afraid I don't know Engli any English literature at all, but it would s be something I've heard. Wait a minute. Lion's Pride? This is strange. I think I have heard of a book by that name before. And very recently, too. It's a title I recognize too, Mr. Naruhoda. Oh, yes, The Lion's... The Lion's... Oh yes, the lion's pride much, my boy. <gasps> Look at this! The book has been badly burned! You're right! You'll never be able to read it in the state, especially not the later pages. What a terrible waste! Judging from the score chases of the paper, and the bad match was abacure very recently. Yes, two days ago. Hmm, a book recently damaged by fire. Why does this raise a red flag with me? <laughs> The prosecution rests. I have nothing further to add. What? You seem surprised, my learned friend. But your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes, but futile. The spurious longer route to the accused lodgings that you tried to establish in your summation examination and the attempt discrediting of these witnesses Power of recollection in your cross-examination. You tired? What right into this, didn't I? You see, everything we said is true. <sighs> Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, but marry me, but you're already married. So perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions. Should the court waste any more time? On this Nippon is travesty. Or is the decision you do you have to make all too apparent already? You have heard all of the witnesses and seen all of the evidence. This trial has run its course. Mr. Narodo, I'm afraid we're in a terribly precarious position. I know, but. If I fight back in the wrong way, it could very well just make matter worse. Ingrinoska, think. What do you do now? Objection! I I'm not done yet! 
No, my learned friend, it's over. The last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense, and you failed. The die has been cast, and there is no more room for debate. Ouch. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... <sighs> I can't think of what to say. If I may, Lord Van Six, it seems somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. Hmm. Your insignificant little Esther Isle must be a lawless hole in two. Wow, this is really racist! For a lowly judicial assistance, you have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Oh! I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So you will have to forgive me, but I consider my assistance as my essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Naru! Hmm. One of this land's great guiding principle is tolerance. So the court will hear you, madam. Go ahead, Mr. Sato. Please. Very well. Pray. What insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you see fit to pursue further? I don't found his voice. Well, the court has been presented with new evidence. Only after the last cross examination finished. I see. And you believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? <gasps> um, Mr. Narukodo, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the obtetism. Besides the proof we 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 ugh. It's just possible that this new evidence might be the new decisive proof that we've been waiting for. The judge is sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their leanings in a moment. And of course, he's sure to ask you to explain what the crucial pieces of evidence is and why. So we must take this opportunity to examine the newly presented evidence as truly as possible. Yes, I understand. And thank you, Miss Susato. This is it. Susato-san has managed to win us at least one chance here. I can let it go to waste. The defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. <clears throat> Very well. The defense may present one further piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers a profound insight into this case and has hitherto been overlooked. Take that! The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print on the crime scene. The fourth book found in the victim's hand. Objection! We have already discussed the fourth book at length! Other than it being in the victim's grasp, at the time of the incident, no insignificant, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further with your flagrant waste of all the court's times, as you well know! Uh, hmm, yes, I'm afraid, Council. I must concur with the prosecution on this matter. When I afforded you this opportunity, you led the court to believe that the evidence in question contains a hitherto discovered clue. So I must insist that you elaborate counsel to all identify this clue at once. Do I make myself clear? Oh, um, yes, my lord. It's, um... Mr. Naruhodo. I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of the evidence. Which means, you may very well be on the right track. Yes! I think you might be right! Oh, counsel. Precisely where is the vital clue to this case, which this fourth book conceals? Precisely where is it? There okay. Got it! Got it! I would ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. The back? What do you- <gasps> Good gracious! It's been burned to a crisp! So we have to ask ourselves why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniable and extremely natural thing for her to do have been doing. Objection! 
unnatural, you say? And what of it, my Nippon is friend? Oh! Were I to concede the point, if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. So should you wish to assert that this fire damage is some bail clue as to what happened that day? Pray, do enlighten us. What truth does this charred book hide? A charged book? There is just one possibility here, which I can quite my bring myself to rule out. It's an outside chance, certainly, but worth a try. All right, I'll explain my theory. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Council. Let's play this tier of yours. Hey, this is gonna be hilariously cool. What are you suggesting that you can assert him from the fire damage the sorry town has suffered? My lord, the burn on the back of this book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon? But we already know who the box belongs to. The victim was creeping in here hand as you fell to the floor. After all, it's obviously hers! <laughs> Poor man. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hands has yet to be answered. However, as to the questions of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has very credible answers. Good gracious, how can you possibly? Very well, I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitably, inevitable demise. But to remember, the members of the jury may well burn you if your little gamble goes awry. So, the defense response here is very likely to influence the final outcome of this trial. So claim, tell the core, who do you claim is the owner of this burnt book? Mr. Gary Dev. The answer is that the book belongs to the couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mistress Gary Dev. The landlords? And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know. But, of all the people in London, one of the six chosen of for the jury duty on this current today is none other than Mr. Gary Dev herself. Oh, oh my goodness, me! I think you must be Mr. Cancer. I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Gary Dev's wife. I'm his maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pretend. All right then. How about a simple question for you? Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Gary Dev's house? I will never presume to know all the books he keeps, sir! Objection! This is outlandish behavior! This woman is the accused landlady, you say? You implicate this hardworking member of the public to besmirch her without a shred of evidence. Your actions are unforgivable. Objection! No, 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 no. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim was stabbed in the pavement below, another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. and Mistress Garrett's house. Good lord! What sort of incident, counsel? Fire, my lord. Oh god, I actually didn't read it! <laughs> I just said it! Where to say it was? Up in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a valley thing. Didn't take long for the fright to spread, of course. The poly furniture started going up as well. What's the fair is, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. There it is! There it is! <sighs> the Lion's Pride! But sure! That's the very same title that the subject of this debate! Oh dear me! Objection! This is risible! All you told the courts is that a book by the same name was involved in a fire! In which case, it would seem... It would be reasonable to assume that it was burned to ashes! And entirely unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime! 
Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Mr. Garidev was considerably enraged. Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Garidev, even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't even imagine being so horrid to the one you love. Can't you really? Should I tell her? <laughs> Absolutely no, sir! My protesting will never raise a finger against me, sir! Are all my favorite old novels in that case? But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh! Up in a smoke. Then the wife started holding things at me. And was I back up against the window, under heavy enemy fire, incendiary books coming in ten to the dozen. Oh boy! <laughs> she threw the books. Through the open window. Please tell me she didn't throw on her The man had his back up against the window and hid a burning books thrown at him? Goodness gracious! Are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and, and landing coincidentally at the scene of the crime? Objection! No! A true investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incident! There is no report of the Garridev's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We also saw no sign of broken glass when we visited the Garridev's household. But is it not conceivable that the window was open at the same at the time and not even remotely? Let us not forget the season and the chilling weather that accompanies it. No Londoner would ever leave a window open in the middle of winter. Oh god, that's good. Does the defense postulate the scenario in all serious news council? Did you earnestly claim that the book found at the scene was a flaming projectile thrown by Master Caritab's wife? Yes. I believe it's a possibility, my lord. That's quite that's quite enough! I'm gonna guess that it's him. Oh, it's here! That's quite enough! Well, I hope that everyone can see you for what you are now, you little foreign trickster! You call yourself a lawyer, but you're just a coward, a mean coward! Really? Claiming that our little tips in the whole neighborhood alive, honestly! Implying that I barely posing as a maid for a princess, and how could you? It's nothing to do with this beastly case, not any of it! All you've done is tell your family's name! No, I, ass I assure you, that was never my intention! I'm drinking an obstacle in his name through the mouth, simply to have divert attention from your failing defense! I should punch your ears, and that's what I should do. It's totally unforgivable. The right. Here we go. How long have we sat here now, listening to this Nipponese spouting off all his fancy for interiors? I hate him. But think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who could possibly have stopped the victim is that little hunchback with the mustache, and he ran away from the scene too. I do declare you right. It's true. Yes, what did I tell you? Makes sense to me. Eh? Sorry? What's that? <laughs> well, it would appear that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury are once again in full agreement. What is your position, Lord Ben Six? In truth, my lord, I feel this has been unnecessary protecting proceedings. But then, one must always exercise patience in order to suffer the best. No! Wait! The, the mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been. Whoa! <laughs> Leg! If books are your predilection, my learned friend, study them at your own time. <laughs> what? No, forgive the discord to see the same. <laughs> uh -huh. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now state your individual decisions regarding the defendant's culpability for the court to hear. Guilty! Here we go again. Guilty. 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 Wait, you two? 
You didn't hear anything that was said. Are we actually going into a second submission examination in just this episode? Thank you for that unambiguous one. That's twice now, it's over! Mr. Narukodo, don't give up! Mr. Sato? Have you forgotten? The battle isn't over yet. You're not suggesting? Of course! The defense has the right to another submission examination at this point. You can still convince the jury to change their mind. Have one more chance! My lord! The defense has to exercise its right to a submission examination! Hmm. You will if you still have trips up your sleeve. I don't intend to trick anybody. I intend to uncover the truth! This is no time to be downcast. As long as there's a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. <laughs> we start the next part with a summation examination! Okay, I'm gonna save right now, I'm gonna take 10 minutes, because I actually am quite hungry, and I'll keep going. Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. For now, I'm gonna share you my amazing... Okay, it's not actually that cool, it's just a freaking screen that actually shows me that I'll be back in a second. Well, actually 10 minutes might be too much, I'm just gonna take a second.
<risa> Tengo mole. <risa> uh, you may have noticed that the music changed for a bit while I was uh, doing the thing. Um, I decided to give you something to listen to instead of just going like... Uh, just hearing the background not noise of the situation. There's actually this section in the game which has some of the musical from the game and I and that is what you've been hearing right now. Mm, I normally enter just to listen sometimes some music or but I try not to go too deep because it has a lot of spoilers. Um now that I'm back, let's go back to the actual continuous screen in this case. Now that we're here. Let's go back to the gameplay. I'm gonna be eating for a while, but I mean, I wanna keep going. This is way too fun, and I want to keep going. I feel like nothing has been answered yet. <clears throat> That's right. I have considered the Defense Council request for a further summation examination of the jury. I have determined that the court must uphold the defense judicial right to this procedure. Why wouldn't you? You're forced to. Out of law. Hmm. So, Consul, you will now proceed with our truck confirmation examination. Yes, you got for there. I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be quite interesting to try to do this with a jury that has two, that has three very comfortable pe people. One, a racist woman. The other one, a woman that doesn't want to admit the truth. This guy who is actually quite angry at us. And I'm pretty sure that jury number three might be the hatter. I'm not, I cannot prove it. Yet again, I feel like he's Mr. First. Anyway, coming back on topic. <clears throat> we are, my lord. Very good. In that case, I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court. The grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of this crime. They really are exploring with this mechanic. I love it. The accused left behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books of his. If there was some noble alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I might reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can be related to the time the window was closed, can it? Dearie me, it was only a little book! Hardly left threatening, even with other red heads! Look, I just want to get this over with. If I don't bring some home paint, uh, home some paint tonight, I'll be in a tie of trouble. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. It gave me the sneezes. Oh my god! Oh my god! Hmm. They are the worst jurors! Hmm. Yes, considerably more tangible arguments from all members of the jury this time around, it seems. Yes? Those were what? Oh my god. I don't know who's worse, Jew or the jurors. With one notable exception, of course. My learned, my learned Nipponist, my learned student friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. So the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And moreover, Hmm. No one else was even at the scene to commit the crime. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the conclusion is so one 
you know, set in stone. I fail to see how it can be arc any other way. That means I'm afraid that during this summation examination, it is essential that you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? What would even consider a tangible explanation that here? Isn't it obvious? Who stabbed the woman? And how? These two details are all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attack was conducted. It was Mr. Skaridev. I hear it was thinking this might be hard. But Mr. Narugodo, you have to do it. Otherwise, this really will be where it, the trial ends. Oh my god. <laughs> Much better. Hmm. I'm getting to set the sun squares. That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with the summation examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel? Oh, yes, my lord! All right, Ronoske, focus your mind now. Double! Clearly, the key to the summation examination is going to be juror number four, the maid. Or should I say Mr. Garidev? We have a book that disappeared from the Garidev's house on the evening, on the evening of the incident. And the poor book found in the victim's hand. There must be a way to link the two. Yes, that's what we have to find. Using every technique I've learned in my short career so far, whatever it takes. Don't forget to keep an eye on Mistress Caridev and how she reacts, even to the things other people say. <clears throat> this woman is a nightmare. Okay, let's see what's the ending phrase. We need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Natsume, could have attacked the young woman in the street, as well as how he or she could have done it. Yes, but well, once again that your statements are full of personal prejudice. A lot of them seem convinced they're right, even in the face of logical arguments to the contrary. I think you're going to need to pit them against each other to force them to accept an alternative explanation. Yes, I don't necessarily need to find contradictions between their assertions. Just a connection may do the trick. Alright, I'll see what I can do. If anything stands out, I'll go in for a strike. That's the spirit! Hmm. Oh. Hold it! But as we now know, there were four books, not three! Well... What the- Whoa! This is absolutely new! Well, what difference does this make? There's every possibility that the fourth book in fact belongs to the defendant landlord! Yes, that's the part I have a problem with! Sorry? Well, at the point the woman was stabbed, this landlord fellow was at home, wasn't he? Enjoying a fairy scrap with his wife or something, you said? That's not exactly how I put it, no. But anyway, the point is the fellow and his wife were somewhere else when it happened. Hmm. I think that's what you call a strong alibi. So it couldn't have been the landlord who did it, which only leaves the snip on his fellow. Honestly, I can see what's all this palaver about. It's a done deal, isn't it? I suppose it is. I got nothing really left to say. If there was some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stopped, I might recall it there. 
So you might be willing to change your decision to me? Oh my, such a delight in your face, but I'm afraid I shan't be swayed by emotion. As by what you think of me, I'm a very mother, metropolitan, and rational woman. You're not. That's great. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by the ta by tea time, isn't it? So I we'll read them in the first place. You see, mother, metropolitan, and rational thinking, what do you say? And not at all that stream. As I see it, a number of overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese men has been implicated by overwhelmingly strong testimony. So despite one or two minor puzzlements, I do declare that the man is overwhelmingly guilty. Mother, metropolitan, and rational logic. What did you say? Overwhelmingly. But as modern girls are always delighted to embrace new facts, you know. So I'd be only too happy to consider an exciting new theory if you could, could come up with one. I'd be happy to do that too, if only I could. Let's do our very best to not disappoint the mother and metropolitan young lady. Oh my god, you too? Right, I'm glad you um, Right, I'm glad you omitted the rational there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's not rational at all. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can be related to the scram if the windows was closed, can it? Hold it! But what about the possibility that the window was open? What about it? I mean, there's just no way it could have been. How can you be so sure? The persecution fellow over there said it earlier, didn't he? Winters in London are no joke. You don't want to invite that sort of cold indoors. So no, that window wasn't open. Us Londoners like sitting by the fire and staying warm, see? But you couldn't categorically state that the window wasn't open, did you? It just wasn't. It, wouldn't ha it couldn't have been open. Then what's the point in even having windows, huh? <laughs> Counselor, you will calmly refrain from childish bickering! <laughs> oh, um, sorry. So why I need to show there's an undeniable possibility that the window was open? Because this young man isn't going to punch otherwise. Hearing me, me, it was only a little bug! Not the knife trading in, even with a three-ring hit! But the little book was on fire in the time, was it not? With flames of love, I'll have you know. There is really no such thing as love in incendiary bomb. <laughs> I really love how he dodges this. Well, he brought up on himself. It's playing with fire to betray a fiery love, isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is certainly a bad thing, yes. The argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mr. Gary Dev. Never mind you, Dad. The point is, we were just having a job and a little dispute. Nothing more. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that it was anything whatsoever to do with this crime. Right, well, we'll see about that. But what about juror number five? He doesn't seem to be turning a hair of Mr. Gary Dev's relentless onslaughts. It's almost as though he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is. And immediately, he raises arms. Hold it! Okay, he wants to get rid of this. You just want to get this over with? How can you sit there and say something like that? A man's future is at stake here. Well, they want me both then. Like I said before. What? I told you already, I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring hope... Oh boy. If I don't bring home some redis with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the Thames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me? My missus doesn't want to mess about, you know. She can be fierce, believe you me. Another shining example of marital felicity. A situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Oh boy. You know, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It was too frightening, that's the thing. I must have blocked it out. Helpful. I wonder if Mr. Pete will ever be dragged into the tanks by his car. 
Don't even go there, Mr. Seto! There must be some way to jog his memory about this. Come to come to think of come to think of it. We had a fire at home a while ago. It gave me this nice. Oops! Does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culpability in this case? Sorry, what's that? You'll have to speak up, lad. Did you tell us more about that fire? Was it last winter? My grandchildren baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. It had 75 candles on the top of it. What a sight to be holding. You put candles on a cake? Was it some kind of devil worship? Oh my god, they don't have the tradition in this bed! Of course not, it was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously! <laughs> it seems that there's a common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Narukada. Anyway, I must turn off my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown run right somehow. The flames didn't go out, but candles went flying all over the room. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. It definitely sounds like devil worship to me. <laughs> and by the sneezes I presume you mean a cold. How did you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was. The grandchildren blessed them, threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. And then because the whole room had filled up with smoke of course. They had to open all the windows to clear it. The window? <gasps> That's it! The biting winter air rushed over me like the devil dancing on my gravy it did. It caught a ter I caught a terrible cold from it. It put me in hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. I knew it was devil worship all along. But something about this old man's story is playing on my mind for some reason. I wonder if it got updated. There it is. Winter house fires are tired. You have to open windows to clear the smoke. That's when the chill gets you. Um, did you change your statement from before? Well, yes, it was one of my most memorable birthdays, you see. I couldn't let it go on, remember? I'm sure the defendant will be delighted that you're using this trial to explore your own past. How is that memory related to this case exactly? Ah, um, sorry, what's that? I'll have to speak up, I'm afraid. Never mind, he's as deaf as a post when he wants to be. But actually, this old man's an anecdote. I just provide the alternative explanation I need to make my point to some of the other jurors. We used only candles on my birthday last this year. It is safer that way. There it is. Oh my god! Here. Objection! These two juror statements clearly contradict one another! They do? How exactly, counsel? Don't put on me again! I told you it wasn't me! Hmm? What's that you say? Speak up, lad! Speak up! Juror number three, do you see? Oh, me? S see what, sir? Did you hear juror number six account of his birthday celebration last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Oh, well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... <gasps> oh! Exactly! On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garidev's household. And Mr. Garidev had the following to say about it. The whole place filled with smoke. Oh my. 
<laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my hat? Oh, my hat! Therefore, to clear the smoke, either Mr. Gary Depp or his wife almost certainly opened the window. That you cannot deny! Would be no way out of the ordinary. Ah, uh, no, I suppose it wouldn't. When you get to my ass, you learn a thing or two, you know. And I can tell you. You have to be a price idiot not to open the window if there was a fire, eh? Yes, of course I need to reconsider my statement. Yes, please do. That's a step in the right direction, I think. The window could have been open when the woman was throwing books, I mean. It's definitely a possibility. At that point, when the victim was attacked on Briar Road, we know there was some small house fire in the Gary Depp's household on the opposite side of the street. Well, yes, it certainly seems that way. And on account of the smoke, I imagine that they could have had their windows wide open in spite of the cold. We also know that Mistress Gary Depp was throwing flaming books at her husband. Her husband, who was packed into a corner by the window due to the wife's frenzied attack. Yes, that's right! So there's definitely a chance that one of the books could have flown past the man and out of the window. Only... Only what? Only I can't really see how it could have gone all the way over to the other side of the road. That's all. Uh. Mm. No, I don't really see how I can change my decision, really. Oh, I see. That wasn't enough? What is it going to take to persuade these people? Okay. Oh my. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're number four. Do you have something to say about that? <laughs> Mistress Gary Depp! Oh dearie me! What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative to confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense now. What is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? Why, I beg your pardon, what are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase got fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window, which can not have been easy since I continued to give him the justly deserved book pattering. Even though your house was on fire. Oh, you never stop drawing until the anger subsides. It will be terrible bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Of course, I should have realized. It's a significant step forward, Mr. Neruda. You've managed to establish that the window was open. We simply must have that added to Mr. Scary the formal statement. Now you mentioned it just the window was open at the time. I clean for cotton, but it's true. Hmm, this is gonna be quite cool. Hold it! The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Gary the us he had been reading. <gasps> well, I really couldn't say! On the day in question, did you or did you not throw at your husband the copy of the Lion's Pride that he had been reading? I did! It was the first thing that I could lay my hands on, the whole street of him! And now you come to mention it, yes! It was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the core from the outset? Because I couldn't join soon, little man. I didn't remember. At times like that, you pick up and throw whatever you can light your hands on as well, you know. I really don't. I barely noticed I was doing a book. Oh boy. Much less the title of it. Right, totally understandable. I 
mean you can waste time deciding what to use next, can you? Why you feel the way I did? You don't care what it is, you just want to smash it into his face! Uh, you see where violence can lead me, Suzato? I'm disheartened to think you might believe me capable of such behavior. Anyway, <laughs> you know because I threw you over the boat. But let's leave fat. Let's, let's. Let's bygones will be bygones. I have a feeling that I may have noticed something. Who am I reacting now a little strange to Mr. Carrot's remarks just now? Ah, uh, perhaps I missed something while I was preoccupied. You already know what happened, didn't you? Oh boy! Excuse me! Here we go! What is it, juror number five? You know, you know something? I... I remember what it was! The memory I blocked out! Huh? It was listening to what this granny was saying! Brought it all floating back! <laughs> granny! Who oh, are you calling a granny, you chicken devil? I'm Mr. Skyrim, or the man, I'll have you know! <laughs> the man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. It's because he's... all the time. It was just about two weeks ago now. I just got back home from work like. I put my hand on my pocket for the wages I just earned that day. And I nearly died. There was a hole. Every last penny had dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? There it is. The wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I have lost the day wages out. That's how I knew the plague was whistling past my ears, stuck into the wall next to me, about an inch deep. Hey, boy. The words just... there are. I could smell it then, you know? That god-awful stench of the things. I was sure I was going to get the face down in the muddy banks that night, I can tell you. No, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. This one woman loves the rag, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatchets, hammers, you name it. Mr. Naruhodo, you mustn't think all that old women are so short-tempered and refined. No, 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 I wasn't thinking that. Growing household objects that people is, well, bad. <laughs> at least, at least attack with honor. You should have bow or the like. What? What? We're going to attack. Never mind. Anyway, this man's words could be rather significant, I think. All right, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare. A woman in a rage will hurt any, almost anything at you. The kitchen knife really brought that home to me. Hold it! Your wife really threw a kitchen knife at you! That's right. It was chopping meat with it. And a tiny edge on it, believe me. Still, it's all memories, isn't it? It started with a smile she threw me when we were courting. And since then, the list of things she's thrown at me has grown along with our relationship. There was a cup, then a glass, and a pot, a kettle, a chair, a wardrobe, a cooker, a bath, a bathtub. Your wife must be even beefier than you. All things came to a head last week when she threw me, right into the things. Still, she's not so bad when she's calmed down. She's a little sweetheart, really. Oh my god! I'm so happy for you. Concerned, but happy. <laughs> If you want to know what I think, I think this whole idea of ladies first that we're so obsessed with in this country, stolen by some clever lads who have been tossing the themes a few too many times by their wives. 
That's a very interesting theory. What a terrible thought. On the face of it, this chair statement just sounds like a real extreme ane anecdote. But I think it might turn out to be an extremely powerful weapon. A weapon that I may be able to use to make the jurors accept an alternative explanation here. All of this summation examination, pretty much all of it, just so tremendously. Now, juror number two. Objection! These two statements clearly have a deeply insignificant connection. Good grief, you mean they don't contradict each other? Explain yourself at once. Juror number two, do you think perhaps that this could be one such novel alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We demonstrated that the fork book, the Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime, originated in Mr. Garidev's room on the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object beside the book could have found its way from the Garidev's household to the street below. Er, what's that now? After all, Mr. Garidev could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, journal number four? What are you insinuating now, you little pimple? I am beginning to think that ever since the true origins of this book came to light, perhaps she had a feeling this might be what happened. Now you listen here, you little string gala. As a foreman of the jury, I demand a straight answer. You give us John some other object making this way out of the house, but what? What was it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. It was a bold accusation to make, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. <sighs> but I'm certain that at the very least, this warrants further investigation. Alright, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that found its way from the Garrett household to the scene of a crime was... The Jack Knife! Juror number four, Mistress Garidev. What? What? No! I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for the court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Oh. Good lord, counsel, what on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged into the victim's hands, man. Don't you see the connection? <clears throat> My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. Mr. and Mistress Garidev were in the throes of the argument. Mr. Garidev, Mistress Garidev was hurling anything she could at her husband, who's being backed up against the window. A window that had been opened to clear the smoke, through which a book sailed to land at the crime scene. You can seriously believe that! The book was found in the victim's grasp! Are you saying that if it flew out the window and across the street land neatly in her hand? <coughs> Even my missus hasn't got a name like that. Yes, I admit there are many details we don't yet understand. But that's the point. That's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. Oh my. <gasps> Mistress Karidev, your answer please. Have you seen this knife before or not? You're now the suspect woman. My lord! My lord! I wish to change my decision! I am a woman of my word after all. Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end now, with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman? I have to agree. Not that I think that Granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment either. All together now, ladies and gents!
in one fell swoop. Wait, wait, did it? Ah, oh, congratulations, Mr. Neruda. So, as a result of this event, so my examination, a number of jurors' leanings have changed. The jurors are guilty against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of this court is divided. And this trial will continue. That was so cool. Now then, Lord Ben Six, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Like a court war, the first few sips are bitter enough. I knew it! But what follows is so report repugnant, it's got for nothing save the gooder. If I may, Lord Man Six! The defense has just put forward a credibly alternative explanation for what happened. Ready, Bob. Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourself better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What do you mean by that? That's his angle this time. It should already be more apparent that between the crime scene and the Caritab's household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the Caritab's house to the scene is some, yes, 15 yards. To be honest, I could throw something 15 yards away. 15 yards, that's around 40 meters. 40 meters? Well, that's a little farther than I imagine. Me too, actually. And as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted, some important significance. Old book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book, untonly hurt by the lady of the house, traveled some 15 yards ran on the opposite side of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. Mm, are you really thinking that she just got it in the in the in your hand? Be sure that she saw it on the floor. Is that your final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? Um, and the jackknife follow a near identical trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's head back. This fantasy is someone stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. Well, <laughs> insulting the oils. There's nothing I can say to that. That, that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. Mr. Sato, serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he? <laughs> Maybe let's pick our battle here. My lord, may I be allowed to speak? As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense, yes. Go ahead. The prosecution may consider the idea of fantasy, but what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end, um, juror number four, Mistress Joan Garidev must be called to testify and submit to cross examination. Saints alive! A cross examination of a juror! We can do that? We can do that? Order, order, order! Well, this is, this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. Objection! 
You're angry. I get it. And unnecessary. Lorban Six? There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross examine. If my learned friend's farcical theory has any trump to it, both a burning book and a jackknife must have flown to the sky before this couple's eyes. And we must assume that they will be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. What do you say, witnesses? Yes, sir! Constable Rolly Pitt reporting for duty, sir! Well... Good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing until now. So, I haven't slept for a month and I found of a villain who's appeared on my beat, so... Oh, they are so heroic, these London bodies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, Rolly, my hero, you make me swoon! I can't I'm going back to her! Very well, I hereby reject the defense's request. Uh oh. And order the witnesses in the stand to testify again. Let for a while before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir! Are they both actually gonna talk this time? Nothing to do with Mr. and Mr. Scaridev. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his work. You see, sir? The typical windows of the top floor of the Scaridev's house are top hinge casements. Top hinge casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave this scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty only was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my awful crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on the phone, sir. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinge casement windows. What does it mean? I actually need to Google that. Oh. Apparently it's a common... Oh. oh, that's bad. I can tell now what is a top hinge window and... It's not gonna help this time. That detail was not in the police report, Constable. Oh, yes, um, sorry about that. I must have been a little drowsy, sir. So. Um, you cannot excuse your sense with drowsiness every time, come. No, sir! So. Um, sorry about that. But exactly is that top hitch cans, hinged casement window? Uh, apparently, I'm not the only one. And, and you. You cannot excuse your ignorance with such a trite remark, my learned friend. Of course, sorry. I found it, Mr. Naruhodo. Pass your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mistress Garidab's room. Alright, I'll try. But the windows open in or opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. But as a top hinge casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. Hmm. I'm glad you rectified your ignorance. A casement window's most prominent feature is its stay. A little bar which prevents the windows from being open, which on a certain amount. It, it prevents it opening? This is all news to me. Absolutely correct, sir! In other words, if a book or knife were to have been thrown through the window open window, it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down to the pavement below, sir. No! You see the problem? Good. Your education in Windows is complete. There was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, only
least the window pane had been shattered. Eh, something we've discounted already. That game. <laughs> Did you see that, Rolly? That junk that Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Oh, yes, my darling. I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, Rolly, you're so strong. What is this happening? I haven't even started the cross examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Also, if you could drag yourself up right again, the court awaits your contamination. My lord. Oh god, another desperate situation. <laughs> Here we go. Do, 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 do. I'm so sorry, Mr. Naruhodo. I have no right to speak out. What do you mean? I requested a cross examination of Mr. Skaridev without consulting you. Even if the judge did deny me. Oh, I see. Well, I agree with you. We do need testimony from Mr. Skaridev. If we're ever going to get to the truth of this matter. Do you really think so? Well, think about it. No matter how far it is across the road or how the windows open, Mistress Garrett, Mr. Garrett Fook found its way to the scene of the crime somehow, didn't it? You're right! And then there was Mr. Scary, the reaction to me showing her the knife. The one was handing me something, I'm sure of it. You're right again! We need to use this cross examination to uncover more. We need to use this cross examination to cover more clues. We'll get to the bottom of this one way or another. I swear! Yes! Hold it! How can you say that for certain? Oh, right. This case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garrett. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his work. What are you questions, sir? And the answer? Yes, this! It has a noble founding principle of the force within the land and has a reminder of the policeman for certain duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Oh, he sh she showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? Let's say I remember. The patrol is through the London. Oh, town and apple. The piece of the common man. It's the... It's what? Ugh. The patrol the streets of London town. Oh. The patrol the streets of London town are all the piece of the common man. It's what the job's all about. And that is why I can stand here today beside my long suffering wife and tell you is good for his work. While rubbing my tired eyes, I immediately... While tired rubbing my eyes... <sighs> he is having so weird pauses. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly so. Oh, Rolly, you're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat! Oh, Rolly! No, none of this is what I meant. I mean, how can you say for certain that this kid has nothing to do with Mr. and Mistress Garidev? I see, sir. You have said so earlier, sir. Ugh, yes, well, so could you answer the question? Was it a waste of time, then? Absolutely, sir. We'll answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mistress Garidev don't think this dispute can be related to the case, sir. Before I get into that, just one thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and your older countrymen to undestroy the great British institution of Scotland Yard. I hope you'll take back some tales of us London, Bobbies, and how we uphold our kind in principle. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I must just arrive here. To that end, to that end, sir, so, I'd be happy to lend you my warm comfort your parasol. <laughs> but I must warn you, you won't be able to get it to get it through with us shit in a few years. Thank you, I'll die. Policeman will strap to preserve the piece within his allocated allotted beam. A 
patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of community relationship. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered in his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir! The windows are talking about. I just start to look a bit of air through the house, you see? Do they restrict it as to how much they open? And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike a pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes. Directly opposite the scene of the crime on the other side of the rather white road. It had been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge case maybe thing before! Well, I have another question for you, Constable. What would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's house is furnished with? Oh, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. Oh, boy. You helped? In what way? Various members of the public were questioned in order to gather information about the case. That's right, sir. As I threw this world over words. Though even though I wasn't under my jurisdiction of my own beat, he obviously wanted to help. I see, well. Thank you. Oh, is it my turn now? Yes, it is. Hold it! Yes, it is. If any have been thrown, they have noticed. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Oh, but Rolly and I were strolling along, isn't it the night sky, looking for a lucky star? Sorry? The star that will guide us to the real happiness. Can it guide you to answer the question? I am a piece of paper flaming book that cut across the sky in front of us. It will have lit up like a shooting star. If I'd seen a shooting star, I'd have made a wish upon it. Let Rolly be an inspector, I would have said. Three times at least. Of course, what with the smoke and everything, you don't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife throws the sky before you? Yes, sir! That is correct, sir! The slap shows the night sky in London is starless, sir! Hmm, simply seems like they're telling the truth. And then we see the poor woman fell to the ground, so we run straight over to help her. I did leave the scene, blah 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 blah. I did leave the scene to call for help. Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If it had been on Rolly's feet, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel by my love. You can be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. So Rolly told me the way. Only I said I've got a little lost in the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. <gasps> oh, but oh, Rolly! There it is. That's a reason. Oh, please. So I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my relay was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, of course, but a true bobbin there is never really off duty, so... I'm taking my, uh, I'm taking my off the game scene for just a moment. So, nothing strange to on the front, so. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. So. My eyes wide open the entire time. Never look away for a second. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. I 
can serve that to the on the generous owner, so Really? That seems a little strange. Make your pardon, strange so it is all together to me. This one copy of the Lion's Press was, really, was originally in the Gary Depp household. But the question remains how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? And you say, Chet, when you shed any light on that? Seeing that you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? Aha! Could it have been a different copy, so? One that just happened to be burnt as well! Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? We can see from the photograph, as we can see from the photographic print, it had a bang over her shoulder. Well, so the book that was in the lady's hand from the moment we were at the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's still not seen right with me. 82 mysteries of how that knife ended up in her bag, and how that book ended up in her hand. There must, there must be some common thread over them. There it is! Excuse me! Do you have something to add, Mr. P Mr. Speed? Hmm? Sorry? You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering. That's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? Okay, what do you mean? Of course, I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so unlucky that it happened on Rolly's feet. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh, yes, that street prior road. That's the boundary between Rolly's feet and the next one. Oh my god, he's an asshole! Whoops, that came out. Isn't that right, my love? Constable beat. Uh, oh yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping out with interviewing the occupants of the guarded household yesterday. Their house is on my beat, you see. Hmm, that really was cutting it close then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the guarded household is in your beat. Does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Garden's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see, I wasn't aware of that. Just think, the woman had been attacked just on the other side of the prior road. We would have never been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a Bobby after all. Are you kidding me? Did that guy really decide to move the body? Extraordinary people or puppies that are literally working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was a good Lord's way of rewarding my Rolly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure that we have the information official record. Leave it to me, Mr. Naruto. I'll take off it immediately. There it is. I know it's my third, I think.
Ah, uh -huh. okay. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? Your, your daughter knows her in you. I can tell. What? I wasn't really, I mean, what's she doing? Please, it's because I'm a woman. It doesn't make my testimony and Lily's viable. You might see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word I am. I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. My boss will be here. My lord, you let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mr. Smith. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of at least resistance is the sage one. That was a very loud matter. I hear that! The Japanese thinks a policeman's worst wife comes from nothing, does he? Now watch out, sir! I've got you! I might let you get away with something like that I might really want! Duly noted, Mr. Speed. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? I know what I saw. My eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, so... Mistress Beat, nobody's questioning that what you've told us. I saw it in it, that evening I said clearly. That little lizard man with the whiskers and the funny car packs slinking away from the sea. <laughs> and I know what I did. I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying to the sky. Oh, very clear. You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I always ended up in the wrong place when I've made my arrangements to be really. He ever gets, he gets ever so cross. Oh, well, we've all made mistakes like that from time to time, I'm sure. I got the wrong church on the other day for way. I remember. It was a terrible kerfuffle. I barely nearly got married to someone I'd never even met before. You kept going with the wedding? That would most certainly not do, madam. Anyway, continue with your testimony, please, constable. Just stop! I didn't take my eyes off the crime scene for one moment, sir. So. Nothing strange to point out from, sir. So. Oh, that's right. Have to go through hair, let's just see. Beat. Is there a problem? He's falling asleep. Uh, 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 no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I will just remember that the same thing happened at that evening as well. You mean Mr. Mistress Beat lost her way? On the night of the incident? Yes, well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the net speed over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside 10 minutes, but my darling was good, I could have bet. Was good, a good 15. Oh, really? You're such a piece. 
thought the reason I was alone was because of the bouquet, see? The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present from our wedding anniversary, really so romantic. He said for for it with a bar things and happiness. A hap with four things happiness he finally the garden while doing his rounds. Yes, how romantic. I've forgotten all about it until just now. Had you my darling? Oh um oh yes. But that that was just between us. Thinking about him. Oh, not talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. What was that all about? Constable Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Narifado. I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to evolve. I mean, I'm sure of one thing. I have to ask Mr. Speed about the bouquet. Mr. Speed, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. What happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my wing for a while. What did you do, man? You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right! Yes, that's right! Oh, I was so upset! When we ran over all, and saw that it was a woman with a knife in her back, I was so sure that the bouquet really gave me. It was a dark spot where the streetlights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police boss to report it to the policeman whose bed it was on? Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the thing the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. In case you need reminded, Mr. S reminded, Mr. S P, the victim is not deceased. I was a closer for a moment before I hear a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably? That's right, silly me! I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. Also, I'm going to keep playing the bouquet this time. Can think how it got there, really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of prior to the opposite? Hmm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it, I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose really brought me with a change from the gutter he spent so long collecting. My bouquet. Do you perhaps mean this sorry solitary rose? Oh my god, you don't have to blame the man like that. Oh! Oh, yes, that's it! That's a bucket really brought me for university! With all bits of change he found in the garden. Maybe just call it a rose! Tell us, Lord Pine Six, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police report in change of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garrigan's household. In front of the Caridab's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, the late where the street lamp had no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the trophy. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have it back now, please? Hmm. No, I think for good measure, this road should be added to the court record as evidence. Now. 
it's a it's very stylish paper the flower it's very stylish paper the flowers wrap in isn't it it's just an old newspaper mr naruhodo oh i suppose it's because i'm not used to seeing english print it looks so exotic to me oh i see is something wrong oh no 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 i was just thinking that if you wrap a stone baked but sweet potato in english newspaper it looks like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, Susado-san, you do love your cakes. An English rose. Such a beautiful flower. This is a rose, is it? I've never seen one before. Do you not take an interest in flowers, Mr. Naruhodo? I don't say that exactly, but I don't know three types at least. Gosh, three? Yes. Bloom Blossom, Peach Blossom, and Cherry Blossom. Perhaps you should consider ranching out. There is some that are in fruit tree base, you say, for example. I want it back after the time, did you hear me? I want it back! Good grief, rest, rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget, Mr. SP. <laughs> okay, now how do I prove this? To report? That's correct, sir. I may wise up and blah 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 blah. No other approach, no other dispute. Our son or sir? Really? That seems a little strange. Make your pardon, sir? Strange, sir? Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Press was original in the Gary Depp's household. Oh, no, actually, I already read this. Oh, that was actually quite different. I need to read it again. Okay, now let's see what she said. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, what do you make of all of this? Hmm, yes. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here now. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime. Made me sure that Mr. Scarlet was hiding something from us. But it's becoming interestingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may have I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time I'm just going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Flowers. Objection. You claim, Constable Beat, that mm, there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be! What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mr. Speed, you explained to the court. That when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was at. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street. 
back into the gutter where it belongs. Meeker! But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to that fact? No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat soared to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the book can't belong to me! It has nothing to do with the case! That's that's why Rowley didn't mention it, I'm sure! No! Because sadly it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Think about it. Beside Mr. Speed Bouquet, there's Mr. Garidev's book. Mr. G Mr. Garidev's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out of the window by his wife. Was up throw the pain on the casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hat. Meanwhile, according to the testimony with her, Mistress Beats Bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mistress Gary Depp's house. There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them! What are you trying to say? The way you're talking is unless you think my role is on something wrong! Don't you listen to a word that's crony lawyer says! Whether you're about books and book ass, why should I care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is! Oh god, Mistress Garidev's come round. You might call it nitpicking, Mistress Garidev. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Naruhoda. <gasps> but the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! Tampering. You barely even heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly... Who could possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. And so, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Brother Beat! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly Beat, it was you! What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense? What would my Rolly do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband! No puppy works more times for the people of London! Mistress Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go in a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene of the crime is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! What about the Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him he did it! If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it! And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Miss Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. <gasps> well, well... Objection! First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right, he's right! But my husband and I just happened to be there! That's all! But why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense! You offer no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats.
Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Narujudo, have you, have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London, against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not to point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevo irrevocably damaged. With that star warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the scene was to hide. Where if the victim fell to the ground? That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You mean, you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you the very start, didn't we? On the payment of Friday Road! You saw it happen, remember? It was right there! As if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? I'm beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Council. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place at evening? I'm there, bro. Take that! But, but that's... I'm there. Was it out of the room? I, I don't understand. On the evening... On the evening in question, Mr. Gary Depp's book fell directly down the open window above. And your bouquet, Mr. Beat, Mr. Speed, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. It's precious! Objection! Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's right! I saw it with my own eyes! It was 5 o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was a typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident of and around the victim's head, until that was actually on the west side of Bright Road... No, that's not true! It can only have been... Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in the sprint. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything. In fact, to the pavement on the east side of Pride Road. Extraordinary! But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the Verus bouquet. The old man said it wasn't noticed until this morning, as it lay where the la three lamps cast no light. Yes, it would be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Bar Briar Road. And that is the defense theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond, Constable Rolly Beat? Um, well, I am very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again. I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything? Important. Oh, really? Listen, 
through, is it? What the lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is because you're the most upstanding radius man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything come out. Everything it's supposed. All it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good golly! Order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, really? Why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is... It's, it's a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Consul, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Charm, your duty is to protect the good of people of London Town. I... I can say so... What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging their yard reputation. For everything. I have a possible explanation. For why on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can't think of, I think of, I can't think of one reason. What? How can you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Jar policeman. And yet Lord Ben seeks, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the mother thus far. Oh, wow! Wow! I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord! Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord! England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind, behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable Pete's unthinkable action? There it is. Take that! I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that through Honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beats in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable B, that day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh yes! It was our very first weird, our very first wedding anniversary. Constable Beef had worked so hard to be able to afford a simple gift for his wife and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal when he and Mr. Speed stumble upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the probe people ahead of them. What must have gone through that man's mind? What's up? <clears throat> Just on that particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mistress 
spit. Why don't someone will allow being married to a puppy like me? I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Oh, Rolling. I thought that you were just a moron, but that act that's actually quite interesting. This is a warring card that Constable Beat offered to lend offered to lend me to. This is a warring card that Constable Beat offered to lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for battling policemen, it says, when a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Constable Beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your people. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious! Constable! Do you realize the gravity of what you have done? It was the first time I've since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. They close to me, Pop! The criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we run over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we are, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his feet, a policeman must assist with initial investigation and help detectives. Why here? Why did this happen to happen here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? It's a copper shop to guard, guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Patsy have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is a net speed to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police box that covered it. And ride along Mirstrom Street and then... I just, I just wanted, just that one night, to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, really? Just that one night. And? Hmm. You knew that it of the incident was in your beat. Your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under their neighboring its care. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I... I... I picked your pardon. Oh, of course he did! Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement! Oh, I see your meaning now. But God called me back up for my sins, didn't he? That's why! That's why I miss the rose I bought for Pa. Oh no, Rolly! This was all my fault! I should never have dropped it in such a dark place! I'm so sorry, Rolly!
And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from the one side of the road to the Orient Order? Oh, oh, um... Or it was just... Just so... Definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume. And the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Gary Depp household, of course. But... What made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, so... That's because... That's how I found it! How you found it? How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. Someone didn't move everything. I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, the lion sprite, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. I already know what happened. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you look at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who done it! Or so I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. Anything moving at all over the road would just make a jet of difference. I, I suppose this is for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Ben Six? I believe that concludes the cross examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, stop! Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir, what will become of my Raleigh? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please don't punish my husband! This, this was all my fault! It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late! Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. So? Let this be a lesson. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes! Oh. Part that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tempering with the sin of the crime. But never again, so? You mean to say? Leave now! This trial is not over yet! Oh, um. I have the feeling that I made somebody say it, please. Well, quite a start on revelation, I must say. Why were some of a third party transplanting the entire scene of the crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable Principally, that the accused Mr. Soseki Natsumi is the only person who could possibly have committed this crime. Objection! 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 I finally have the solution. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true symbol of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be possible, who could be responsible for the nightmare of the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Ben Six, is this true? Very well. Name the person if you will, and if further investigations is called warranty. Prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You will name this other person who could have possibly perpetrated the crime. Well, Joan. You're falling here. The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case. 
It's imperative that we cross examine your number four, Mistress John Carrida. Me? Oh, there is me. That request has already been denied. Objection. But the situation is very different now. Mistress Gary Depp, answer me this. What do you want to know, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Gary Depp. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks over Brian Rowe. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the top, open top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I say, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mr. Gardner. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back, have you really never laid eyes on it before? <gasps> I don't recall it. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I pick up and throw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there in all that recall it said, members of the jury needn't testify, did he? Conveniently, yes. Objection. No, I have no recollections of saying that out at all. Juror number four. <gasps> Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madame, let the truth come out. Band six. I am starting to change my opinion on you. But, but that's just a common or garden knife. It could have come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Mistress Karitev. Now you listen to me. To below all this nonsense, I couldn't bear the thought that I injured someone. Did you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. You want to see how hard I are evidence if you're going to see that it's on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove to me that I throw that knife if that's what you think. Along now, chop chop, do your worst. Uh, well, well, Mr. Narukoda. If I had a Vincent like that, believe me, I would have thrown it out here already. Then take the stand, juror. <gasps> the prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Six. I am going to have to testify? Yes, you are. Juror number four. I'm sure you will appreciate it, having observed it with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses, clear themselves, may not even have been aware. Oh dearie me! So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mistress Carita, and mark my words in this court of law today. We shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsel? Certainly, Lord. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the Old Bailey. I'm a lawyer.
witness. State your name and occupation. Oh, um, yes. My name is Joan Gardev. And I'm on. Well, I'm a juror and such like. It sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what I know. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord! You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh dear me! Chin up, Johnny! Nothing to worry about now! I didn't know you were here, John! Wasn't only you in the room that they all think, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But, but what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that, Arlene, what is it? I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John! I presume you are Mr. John Garidev. Yes, sir! Former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Numbed Northumberland Fusilier, sir. In my first year of action, I now live in the quiet life, as it were. The quiet life? Would you not engage in an incendiary battle with your spout on the lady question? <laughs> yeah, that's so great. Well, yes, I'm right. I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, your number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once! I wish there was a continue. Actually, I'm gonna make it myself. I am very tired. I didn't realize that I was almost at 12 in the morning. So for now, for the first time, I'm not reaching a or maybe I should. How far I am for I can continue I'm so uh, So tired now. Hmm. God, I'm so tired. Hmm. I. I can't go anymore. And I'm not going to check on this. I don't want to spoil my. <sighs> okay. Oh, God. As, as you can imagine, guys. This is a very, very long case. I mean, it's a case four. Case four can be very long, to be honest. And it's starting to feel like that. Tired and it's almost 12 in the morning. I mean, it's almost 12. It's almost midnight. I think I already streamed almost five hours. And I have to work tomorrow. So I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna continue with them tomorrow. There, I hope that there's. I hope that there's still a lot of case because I wanna make sure that the stream from tomorrow is actually worth it. 
Oh god, I just said tomorrow. I actually don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow. I have overtime tomorrow, and I have to see someone tomorrow. So, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get, to go to, to stream again tomorrow, but I'm gonna make sure that it's soon because I really am enjoying this game. Also, I'm finding it fascinating how the two couples that I already saw this uh, this game are actually quite wholesome. Maybe that's the reason why this is actually focusing on the Kokoro. But for now, I don't have anything else to say. Okay, see you everybody next time. And remember to point out all of your contradictions. Alright.